Are the Galaxy Book Pros the best all-around Ultrabooks to buy? Well, when I first saw the announcement, I thought it was gonna be underpowered, it's gonna run hot and loud, but once we actually used and compared them, I was really surprised, especially by three different things, and no, that is not including the OLED displays. And overall, I just have one complaint about this machine that may or may not be a deal breaker for you. Now, let's start out by mentioning that I have two of these models. Obviously, you guys can see I have a 13 inch and a 15 inch model. These are both i7 models and between them, the performance is almost identical, which is a great thing. Samsung is keeping it very simple with these machines. You just have a few choices. Do you want a 13 inch or a 15 inch? And do you want the base model that has 256 gigs of SSD and an i5 CPU? Or do you want to upgrade that to get double the storage and double the RAM? And that is great. Other than that, the screens are both OLED displays and they are both 1920 by 1080p and there are both pros and cons with that screen. But before we dive into performance and everything else, let me give a thank you to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. Micro Center has 25 stores nationwide with an impressive variety of electronics from gaming, VR, computer parts like processors, graphics, and everything else needed to build a PC. They also have a huge variety of desktops, laptops, and all of the accessories that you need. Not only that, but they also have highly trained staff and low prices. Check out a local Micro Center today to get your hands on a variety variety of products before purchasing or use the link down below to check out these Galaxy Book Pros at microcenter.com. Let's start out with the design and build quality. I have to say that this 13 inch is impossibly lightweight feeling in the hand. I know we've reviewed the LG Gram and that thing is light, but this thing takes it to a whole nother level. It comes in at 1.9 pounds and it is very, very slim, a lot slimmer than the other laptops. The LG Gram is thicker. Um, the XPS is a lot thicker. You guys can see there's even cutouts for the HDMI to allow it to fit. And then the same thing for the USB port on the other side. Now, as far as ports, both these machines are identical. We have an HDMI, a USB Type-C, and a Thunderbolt port, and this does charge with USB Type-C. And on the other side, we have a micro SD card slot, a full-size USB Type-A, which is crazy, and then a headphone jack. Now, the larger 15-inch model, this thing comes in at an unbelievable 2.3 pounds. So although it is heavier, the weight's a little bit further from your hand, it is still insanely light for a 15-inch machine. And with that, the build quality is surprisingly good for that weight. We have a magnesium alloy shell, and even though it's so thin and so light, it has very little flex, a lot less flex than that LG Gram. Now, there is one difference with the 15-inch model. You can flex a little bit more and actually get the key, the little click pad to click by flexing it. That doesn't happen with the 13 inch just because it's a little bit more dense. So this one does feel a little bit better as far as uh, the overall um, stiffness of the chassis, but I have no complaints with either one. One thing that is slightly annoying is just how much of a fingerprint magnet these machines are, both the outside where I have the blue and then even the palm area right over here. So keep that in mind, you're gonna have to clean them up. Getting into the quality of the keyboards and the trackpads, we do have a fingerprint scanner built in. So so right there, very easy. Unfortunately, the webcam does not have Windows Hello Unlock, which that's a bummer. I love being able to just open it up and log in on, on some of the other Windows laptops. The keyboard itself on the larger model, we have this numpad and the quality is great. Has a nice feel to it, um, a lot of feedback. It's fairly quiet. The trackpad on the other hand, it's just about average. Um, it's a lot harder to click up top, almost impossible here. A lot easier, it's like a standard diving board design. It is fairly responsive and gestures do work well. Now the other thing that's about average with these laptops are the webcams and the microphones. They're not bad, but they're not particularly good. Go ahead and take a listen. This is the microphone quality of the Galaxy Book Pro's dual front-facing microphones, and this is the video quality you can expect with the highest settings. And now let's get into probably the biggest spec sheet item for these laptops, especially at the price, and that is the displays. We have two OLED panels on both of these, which is really rare for a laptop at this price point, and especially rare for a laptop that is this thin and lightweight. 
Now OLED allows you to have uh, each pixel that can turn off on its own and that allows for perfect contrast where video looks excellent on there. And that definitely is true for these laptops if you're watching in a dark environment then video looks excellent. It provides a great movie experience. But unfortunately, if you're not watching in a pure dark room, if you're in an environment like this, or especially if you're outside, the benefit of OLED gets lost because of reflectivity. Now, when you're outside, the screens do get quite bright, 400 nits, that's better than average, but it's still not enough to battle that, uh, how easily the, the screen reflects. So that can be an issue and unfortunately, Samsung didn't put on a you know, top of the line coating like some of the new Dell XPSs are using. Now, along with that, the displays are not touchscreen. So if you're into that, if you like being productive, you like scrolling, be able to select things, you're not able to do that with the screen and the display is also a 1080p resolution on both of these. Now, that is both a plus and a minus. On the minus side, if you are watching movies, if you select 4K, you're not gonna get that full benefit of that sharp image. And when you're reading text, if you're doing spreadsheets, being productive, you can tell the difference. You can tell that it's not as sharp as other offerings, especially on the 15 inch model. On the plus side, we have battery life, which I might as well just mention right now. It is excellent. It was definitely a nice surprise. Um, about 10 to 12 hours on the smaller one and about nine to 11 hours with the larger 15 inch, which is an excellent battery life for the 15 inch, in part because it is using a mobile chip, one of the ones designed for Ultrabooks, not a higher end i7, and the display being 1920 by 1080, that saves battery, plus the OLED helps as well. Now, the last thing I wanna cover as far as the screens is the aspect ratio. You guys can see that it's wider, 16 by nine. A lot of laptops are using 16 by 10 now, gives you a little bit of extra vertical space. It's not as big of a deal for for this 15 inch model as the 13 inch where it really helps. Um, and then some laptops use three by two, which is really great for spreadsheets and other productivity. And now let's talk about speakers. This is really my biggest disappointment with these machines. The speakers sound decent, not great, probably about average, just like the trackpad is average and the webcams are average in terms of Windows laptops. But if you are gonna enjoy this OLED display to watch movies or shows at night, or even maybe play some games and you don't have headphones to use, it is fairly quiet. One of the quieter laptops that we have tested within the last couple of years. So keep that in mind. If speakers are important to you for movies or anything else, you probably aren't gonna be very thrilled with these speakers. And now let's get into the second way how these really stand out, and that is the performance. When I first saw these machines and how lightweight and thin they were, I said surely, one, the performance is gonna be suffering because of thermal throttling, the fan noise is gonna be loud, and with that, most likely when you unplug it, in order to reach that battery life, the performance is gonna plummet, but I was really pleasantly surprised. Both of these right here are i7s. The i5s are not that much slower, and in single core, both get around 1500, a little bit higher than 1500, which is excellent with these 11th gen processors and multi-core of over 5000. And with that, fan noise wasn't really that much of an issue. Sure, you can hear it, but it wasn't very loud, and the temps were good as well. So I don't know what voodoo magic Samsung did with these machines to make them run so uh, nicely compared to other laptops that are thicker using the same processors, but they did a good job. But what surprised me absolutely the most uh, is the performance when you unplug it. The performance basically does not change. Um, we saw other laptops that get cut by about half to a third in performance, these almost didn't change. And so what does that mean in the real world? Well, with this good battery life and the performance that stays the same, you don't have to worry about finding somewhere to plug it in. Now, for our Photoshop test, the new super resolution tool, it actually upsized a 42 megapixel raw image in 53 seconds unplugged. Whereas our uh, LG that we tested, which slows down dramatically when it's unplugged, that got close to 10 minutes. Now, of course, it's not as fast as an M1 MacBook Air, which we also tested. That does in 13 seconds, but that has de dedicated machine learning cores with the M1 chip. So overall, unplugged performance is great. Now, the same thing goes with graphics. Uh, the Intel Iris XE graphics in here, they perform great using Vulkan and Geekbench 5. We have around 16,000. 
also does not go down at all when you unplug it. So what does that CPU and GPU performance really mean in the real world? Well, in Adobe Lightroom, the same exact export, 42 megapixel raw images, 50 of them that are edited, took four minutes and one second for the Galaxy Book Pro compared to four minutes and 25 seconds for our M1 MacBook Air. And that software is actually the Apple Silicon version. And the editing is just as smooth as with the M1 MacBook Air. So I definitely was not expecting that. Now in video editing, uh, it is just as fast as the Dell XPS, even though it is cheaper. And there, it does go a little bit slower than our M1 MacBook Air, but it does not have those special encoding chips that the M1 does. And the last thing that I wanna talk about that really surprised me is just the price point. I saw the 999 price point for the base 13 inch model. This one comes in at $200 more. And the 1099 for the 15 inch model, this one also is the upgrade one. That is just a great price if you're comparing it to the LG Gram, to the Dell XPS, to the Huawei, you know, to a lot of other Windows laptops out there. Not only does it perform better, especially unplugged, the fans are quieter, we have more ports, the quality is good, it is lighter, but the price point comes in at about $200 less than the competition. And of course, you have this OLED display if you're going to use it in darker environments, you get that benefit as well. So when you combine all of that, and you know that you need a Windows laptop, these are great options. Of course, you're gonna miss a couple things such as maybe a brighter and less reflective display or the ability to swap out your SSD, you know, things like that. But when you factor in the price point and what you get, they definitely are a great value. Now, of course, I have to also mention the M1 MacBooks, especially the M1 MacBook Air. That thing comes in at the same MSRP. You can also get it on sale. And it does have a display that is just as bright, but it's less reflective and it is more color accurate, has a better keyboard and trackpad, better speakers, and also better performance. But that does run macOS. And even though we love macOS, a lot of people, they can't yet use it. Uh, they Maybe they need Windows or maybe they just prefer Windows and not having to go through parallels, stuff, stuff like that. So I definitely see uh, the reason for having these in the market. So Samsung, you guys did a killer job. You're keeping it simple, great price points, great design and quality, and insanely lightweight while still managing good performance and good battery life even when it's unplugged. So there you guys have it. That is my review. If you're looking for a great machine, this would be definitely at the top of my list for Windows laptops. Once again, we have links to Micro Center down below. You guys can click that circle above if you guys wanna subscribe and help us reach our goal of 1 million subscribers before the end of the year. You guys can check out one of those great videos over there. This is Max and I will see you in the next video.